Welcome to Fast Effect Double Speed Magic the Gathering. Here we have Tyler on Death and Taxes versus Ben on Blue White Stone Blade. Leading out with a Mystic Sanctuary, which is pretty, pretty weak versus Death and Taxes. They've got Wasteland and Rashadenport to punish that mana base. And of course, Thalia to make all your spells cost one additional mana. Well, all of your non-creature spells, that is. Stone Blade does have some quality creatures to be playing. Stoneforge Mystic is going to be in both of these decks. And honestly, Death and Taxes is going to be the better Stoneforge deck, uh, in part because of cards like that right there. The Mother of Runes can really protect. And at this point, looks like going to draw a Swords to Plowshares. It's pretty much now or never when it comes to Mother of Runes. You really have to plow that mom as soon as she shows up. Otherwise, once she gets to untap, there's no good window. Stoneforge Mystic. And Ben able to find what he needs a little bit faster. And grabbing Gumazawa's Jite. A mark that he is familiar with some theory for this matchup. Oh, and Revoker. Brutal. So that's going to stop the Jite for now. And it's a bit of a problem because it's not even like you can equip it. And then get rid of the Revoker for like a blowout scenario. There's there's really no surprises that are going to be happening here. Spirit of the Labyrinth. That's a pretty devastating card to add into the mix as well. Ben may need to respond if he has a Brainstorm. Now would be the time. Once Spirit of the Labyrinth is out, your Brainstorm is actually going to end up drawing none. Ah, here we go. Into a Violet 3. No Flicker Wisp to save it. So Ben in very good shape. That could have been incredibly bad. Jite. Equipping and turning sideways. And do we have the Skyclave Apparition? No, we have a Flicker Wisp. That's actually shocking to me. Flicker Wisp comes in, gets rid of the Jite. And is going to let it come back. With the Stoneforge still in play. Very interesting. This is not at all how I would have played it. Let's see what ends up happening. But I am now surprised. And not knowing what to expect. Violet 3 is extremely dangerous because of Flicker Wisp, Recruiter of the Guard, and now the new Skyclave Apparition. That 3, can three casting costs Vindicate with a 2-2 body is incredibly incredibly powerful for this deck now death and taxes used to actually create inevitability with mangara he would he's a legendary creature that you can tap and the effect is exile him and another permanent so you could tap him and then respond by caracasing him back to your hand and just start blowing up your opponent's lands you're using uh, already you've got Wasteland and Rashad and Port, you've got Athalia out and you just create this inevitability where they have literally no permanence in play and you can just beat them down with Thalia each turn but we are a long ways away from that we've got Brazen Borrower bouncing Flicker Wisp with the Adventure side and now Stoneforge picking up the Jit it's going to get a couple of counters. And once there are counters on JIT, it is, it is a big problem for death and taxes. Pretty much everything has a tiny butt. Just one counter enough to take out most of the cards in the deck. Talking about Flicker Wisp, Recruiter of the Guard, Thalia, Mother of Runes. I mean, there are some two butts, but Flicker Wisp shot down. And now Recruiter of the Guard coming in.
to grab a Skyclave Apparition. That's going to be stranded in Tyler's hand for now, though, as he's doing all of this work off of an Aether Vial and only two lands. A GTA of his own. Brazen Borrower coming back off of its adventure and now sort of Fire and Ice as well. This is some equipment based massacre. We've got GTA and Sword of Fire and Ice. This is going to be just bodies hitting the floor. Get these 1-1s one out of there. Card drawing, counters added. What a bloodbath. This is this is no good for Tyler. Now he can get a Skyclave Apparition out to try and slow the bleeding, but either one of these equipment is going to be able to take him right out of the game. Sure, what, what are you going to hit? I mean, I guess you hit the... Oh, we got Sword of Fire and Ice? Just going to give Ben a 3-3 is the net effect of that. I mean, I suppose it's better... Then the extra four damage a turn plus the card draw. Don't get me wrong, but this is this is not a good situation. Batter oh casually hard cast. I'm gonna go ahead and mark a W. Oh, Tyler agrees. That game is over. All right, starting out game two here. Tyler planes mother of runes. This is going to force Ben to either have a force of will or some immediate removal. Otherwise, this Mother of Runes can really complicate things. Oh, and she's just getting in there. Tyler being super aggro. Got a Flagstones. I do not like tapping Mom there at all. Gives Ben additional top decks towards a Plains. Ooh, this is... <laughs> <laughs> this is dangerous. Tyler may have more insight into this matchup, but I feel like this sets Ben up to be able to brainstorm into a Swords to Plowshares and get rid of what would otherwise be a very difficult to deal with threat or answer. I mean, it's not really so much a threat as just making everything else in Tyler's deck so much more difficult to contend with. Oh, but Ben grabbing... An island. So no swords yet. He's going to ponder. Planes. Unsanctioned. I actually really like those. Stoneforge Mystic showing up for Tyler. Grabbing Sword of Fire and Ice. Which is often the go-to card for Death and Taxes with uh, stronger players. Most people think Batter Skull 24-7. Sword of Fire and Ice will actually let you grind out games that batter skull uh, would otherwise leave room for your opponent to get back into the game. You hit your opponent three or four times with the Sword of Fire and Ice. I mean, those extra cards can absolutely make all the difference in the world, especially when those cards can become more cards. Things like Recruiter of the Guard or Flicker Wisp getting that ETB to happen again. And True Name Nemesis. And this becomes a really interesting situation. Now, True Name, not going to be able to be handled, but it can get rushed past thanks to Mother of Runes. But of course, if it turns sideways, then it becomes a race. So right now, Tyler has to gauge how this is going to play out. I think that True Name might be from me. I recognize that signature, unless... Unless the artist signs like that frequently, which is totally possible. Flagstones. 
Pretty fun card. Definitely good against smallpox. Which uh, doesn't seem to be a big part of our meta. Though I have seen it in a reanimator deck, which is really interesting. Mono black reanimator running smallpox. Your opponent opens up with a turn one noble hierarch and you dark rituals, smallpox, reanimate a gristlebrand. That's a pretty severe swing. So this true name nemesis squaring off against a stoneforge mystic, bringing in batter skull, and then we got mother of runes as well. So this is fairly tense board state. Oh, sword of fire and ice. That is huge. Pro blue, absolutely brutal here. Sort of fire and ice getting bounced temporarily with this batter skull. Bouncing off of true name nemesis for now. And Ben brainstorming. Sort of fire and ice will eventually stick and run out the clock very, very quickly on Ben. I mean, that is 8 damage at a clip plus drawing a card. Pro Blue, so relevant here. Yeah, Mirren Crusader, another card that sometimes see play in Death and Taxes. I'm actually glad to see it go. I think Skyclave Apparition is exactly the type of card that Death and Taxes wants. Ooh, Danger Zone here. Equipment on Ben's side. He's got the GTA on the true name nemesis. Hmm. Actually not swinging there. Well, I suppose it actually would have just got blocked by Mother of Runes and tapped given that he was out of mana. Shields would have been Reasonable to put down. Certainly better than letting a counter go on Gite, so there's no way Tyler can afford to take that hit. But the sword has come back down. And now Tefiri. And Tefiri is going to bounce... the Batter Skull. Engineered Explosives at 1. Mom's days are numbered. The Germs still sticking around. That is the thing people sometimes get confused on. So the batter skull getting bounced does not bounce the germ. Normally it works that way. Normally the germ just goes away. But oh, Skyclave Apparition showing up, taking the GTA and the last hope that Ben had for that game with it. But that germ token actually going to stick around when you've got multiple pieces of equipment keeping it alive. Sword of Fire and Ice makes it a 2-2. Now, if it's a, a GTA, when the Batter Skull goes, there's no way of using those plus two, plus two pump abilities to have the, the germ survive. But Sword of Fire and Ice just pumps all night long, plus two, plus two, and germ can be totally formidable just carrying that. I mean, that's how good Sword of Fire Ice is in this matchup. Just Pro Blue gets past that true name nemesis. And even on a zero power creature, you're still going to be pushing through four damage at a time. Which is more than enough to win from that board state. Basic planes for Tyler in this game. Three Ben. A couple of land drops. Island and an arid mesa. Slow start for both players. Death and Taxes usually wants to have an Aether Vial or a Mother of Runes out at this point. First play of the game. 
committing to the board is going to be a recruiter of the guard. Card which you really don't care. Like it's a 1-1 one, one body. And it's going to go ahead and get Thalia. You are totally fine if they force a will your recruiter of the guard. That is a non-issue. And certainly if they remove it, I mean, it's got a lot of utility, but it's not exactly the type of thing you'd be fighting over. Man, Ben fetching in response to being attacked here. Flashing in a hull breacher, and Tyler going to swords the hull breacher. And jam a Thalia. And a Mother of Runes. Look at that board out of nowhere. A reasonable clock and a Thalia. Swords to Plowshares takes out the Mother of Runes, leaving the Thalia. That is a little bit of a decision. It would indicate that Ben probably has another piece of removal for this Thalia. But we'll see. Aether Vial and Spirit of the Labyrinth. It's a legitimate piece of hate. Spirit of the Labyrinth. Been around. I mean, it's from Born of the Gods. And when it got printed, people were kind of kind of excited about it. I think the power of Hushbringer, or Hull Breacher, I should say, from Commander Legends has really solidified their understanding of just how powerful it is to deny your opponent card drawing on a body. There's Leovold, Narset, and now Hull Breacher. Those are seeing play, and it's kind of brought Spirit of the Labyrinth out of retirement, so to speak. And here's a play. Gideon, that gets a force of will, pitching Ponder, the sideboard card. Often can win a game on its own. And it can be difficult for control to contend with. But there, it draws a force of will, which is about as much as you can hope for out of a card in Magic, is to trade with your opponent's force. Barring effects like Cavern of Souls, it's usually as good as it gets. And here we've got a Snapcaster Mage. Getting ready for a total blowout. Looks like he lit up swords to plowshares with that snapcaster, and that's going to be live for the rest of the turn. So this kind of creates a situation where not only does Tyler end up losing a two-for-one exchange, but he also can't effectively commit to the board, at least on that turn. Oh, Containment Priest... In response to Aether Vial, Tyler opts not to put something in, as his vial is now just a fancy trinket, not actually going to be of any use while this Containment Priest is around. Spirit of the Labyrinth, slightly bigger than Containment Priest, but they'll probably just be staring at each other for a little bit here. Swords to Plowshares. Meets a hard cast force of will during the end step. That does open up some possibilities here for Tyler. Skyclave Apparition. Clearing the Containment Priest. And now three damage comes across. When you can get your opponent tapped out on their turn. You can be fairly confident about your ability to resolve a spell. On your turn. And now we've got a Flicker Wisp which shows up and wrecks that germ. Immediately, Tyler, familiar with this situation, able to just put significant pressure on board here. And it looks like Ben's going to get out-tempoed as he's got a batter, skill, batter skull on board, but no germ. And Sword of Fire and Ice adds that extra damage for the next turn. It's going to need to be like a Supreme Verdict which I believe is actually in the list, it would be a heartbreaking play not to happen this game as Tyler 
out tempos Ben. Despite that batter skull arriving, Flicker Wisp just brushing aside the germ and clearing the path to victory. That is all for this one, but don't worry, there is a lot more. Uh, you can check out our older videos, and we're always putting out new videos from ELD's Time Vault Games in Bellingham, Massachusetts. If you want to help the channel, of course, you can like, subscribe, share, tap that notification bell so you can know uh, the next time our new videos come out. Thanks for watching.